Hi everyone, it's Bev DeBono and I have a great technique for you using the frame punches from Creative Memories. So before we start, I just wanted to explain what a frame punch is. And a frame punch is um, one of our standalone border punches that also can make a frame. And there are um, only, I believe these were the ones that we've had, 11 frame punches in our, um, uh, that Creative Memories has released. And right now, I believe there are five that are still available. Spider webs is one of them that's available. Demisk Flourish frame is still available. Spring Leaves frame is still available. Geometric frame is still available online and Dollop Arch frame is available online. So what makes frame punches different from regular border punches? Well, first off, when you take a look at them, the, the punch itself will give you a punches in a two inch increment or what we call a two inch repeat. Okay, and you can punch a regular line, like a regular punch, or because it's a two inch repeat, when you use increments of two, um, you can make these wonderful frames. So this is the same punch that is the um, spider web punch. I'm just trying to get something so you can see it better. Um, that's the spider web punch and a border, but then also as a frame. And this is cut from a four by four square, and this is cut from a four by six square. Okay, so you can also do a frame around the entire page. But for the technique that we're doing, we are gonna be making these border, um, these square frame punches. And because it's a two inch repeat, we're able um, to do that. Now, as I said, not all punches are frame punches. So in order to do this technique, you wanna make sure that you are using a frame punch. Now, when you punch or a regular line, such as this, a regular border, we usually start punching on one of the black lines by the title Creative Memories. And then we move it and we keep punching on, we line our design up to the design on the shelf and then keep punching our complete line. But to make a frame, we move our paper to, there is a, a little silver line on the tray. I don't know if you could see it here. I'm trying to move it so you could see it. See, there's this little silver line on the shelf itself. And that's where we're gonna start punching. Okay, so that's um, one of the ways that you can tell if you have a frame punch is if your punch has one of these uh, silver lines on the shelf of your punch. Okay, so select a frame punch that we're going to be using and then select some of your uh, papers that you're going to use to make a frame border and um, some coordinating um, other papers. And the what I love about this particular technique is that with this border, you can have it on your sides, you can have it um, two borders across the top, you can have them on the other side, you can have one up and one down, um, such as that. Um, and it really is a very, very nice uh, page uh, border. Okay, so this one on the left is done with the Damask Flourish frame punch and the silver and gold 
collection with the stickers. Okay, and these little pieces, these corners, are really some of the debris that comes out from the punch itself. And I utilize them in the corners to make some really nice corners. Okay, not all of those frame punches will give you that extra piece, but the damask flourish does and the spider web does. And we're going to be using, I'm going to be using the extra pieces from the spider web here. And they also made the little corners on the edge of my mats. And that is coming from the debris that comes out from when I punch this um, particular page. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get some paper. And we're going to make three frames. Okay, and so we need three four by four, <clears throat> three four by four um, pieces of paper in order to make our frame punch. Okay, so let's cut some four by fours. So we need four by four. We need three of those. Okay, so let's just select whatever color you'd like. This one already happens to be four by four. I was just using some of the scraps I had left from something else. Okay, so we need three four inches by four inch squares. Okay, and that is what we need for to do our frames. And then if you want to do um, an extra piece down the middle here to kind of supplement your frames, um, you need um, two one inch by 12 inch strips. Okay. So, but let's do our frames first. Okay, so we have our three four by fours. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna take our frame punch and we're going to insert our square into the punch. Okay, and we're gonna line up the outside edges of the paper on both sides at that silver line on your shelf silver line on the shelf. Okay, and we're gonna line it up so that it, it goes right in the middle on both sides. Okay, and we're gonna punch that down. Okay, so we're gonna end up with um, a punch and then two extra little pieces at the end, that's fine. Now we're gonna turn it to the right or the left, whichever way. And we're gonna put that edge piece here and the other side of your paper into the punch and center it in between the two lines on your shelf. And then punch. Okay, and you will get this little one inch piece that you can just pop off and you can do fun little things with these one inch pieces. And look what's popped, look what the debris it is that came out of that punch. So like I said, not all of these punches will give you a nice little uh, piece like that, but this particular one does. And I'm going to just cut those, just trim those in half and you see they become little corners on your mats, okay? They can also make fun little mustaches for like, you know, um, a masquerade kind of thing. Okay, so keep turning it. We're gonna do all four sides.
There we go. Okay, so there's our frame. And I'm gonna save these little, little corners here. And I'm gonna, I actually end up saving my little one inch squares. And I'm going to cross those. We're gonna do that two more times. So insert your next square right into your frame punch. Center it between the two lines on the shelf. Punch, turn, punch, turn, punch, center it, and punch. Okay, so I just want to clear out the punch. This is my second one. I'm gonna save those little corners that I'm gonna use for my mats. I'm gonna save my one inch pieces. And then I'm gonna to toss the debris. Okay, our third one, here we go. Center it between the two lines on your shelf. Punch, turn center punch. Turn center punch. Turn center punch. I feel like we're in an exercise class. Who says we don't exercise when we scrapbook, right? <laughs> okay, so just pull out your, your one inch pieces. And there we go. I'm gonna now save my little pieces here and take out my debris. So I want to show you real quick something about these one inch pieces. Let me see if I can just grab someone, one that I just did the other day. Um, and this is just with one inch pieces all around the edges here. And I just did this one the other day. This is with all these little debris all these little one inch pieces that I took off of the um, edges there. So, okay, so don't throw away your little one inch pieces. They are really, really cute. Okay, so now we're ready to actually put this on a page. Um, and I'm going to decide, um, I at first I wanted to put my spider webs on this really busy pattern. But you see how the spider webs really got lost in translation here, and you can't really see them. So what I decided to do was to put a piece of that new grape, gravity grape paper, um, and make that my piece instead. So if you are using a very busy pattern, and your frame punch isn't popping up, then get a coordinating color. And you want to cut that to four inches because your frame is four inches. You want to cut this piece to four inches or by 12. Okay, and then you want to just um, Move this over here. You want to just nestle it under your, your strip here. Okay, so I'm going to just put this on my paper and I'm going to line it up. I think this one I'm going to line up. Um, I'm going to do it on the right hand side since you see I've already got it on the left hand side. Okay, and I'm gonna line it up right on the edge of my paper. Okay, so that is just an option if you're using something that's very busy and you can't really see your frame punch, you can always put in another color. Now, how do we line this up so that we get it straight? Well, let's use a ruler and I'm gonna put a ruler at the two inch mark at the top 
and also at the bottom. So at the top, it's a two inch mark, the bottom at a two inch mark. And I'm just gonna take a pencil and draw a pencil line. And it's okay that it shows because we're gonna be covering it. I'm gonna draw a pencil line all the way down. Okay. And now what I wanna do is use my repositionable tape to put my frame punches down and line it up on that two inch line. Okay, so with the repositionable tape on my silicone mat, and if you don't have a silicone mat, you can use, um, I use from, you know, the back of my stickers, once all my stickers are used up, this is wax paper. You can use the wax paper from that, the wax side of it, or you can also use a parchment paper if you don't have a silicone mat. Okay, so I'm gonna line up tip to tip on the two inch mark right at the top, and then the bottom one goes right on that two inch mark. Okay, then I'm gonna do the second one, but I'm gonna put this one at the bottom next. The bottom next. And the reason I do top and bottom first is because this way I have more flexibility with my middle piece and I can really center it better. I've always found in the past that if I try to guess, if I do the top one, then the middle one, and then the bottom one, I'm always picking the middle one up and moving it. So I've just found it's easier and faster for me to just tape down the top one first, the bottom one second, and then your third one, you can adjust um, exactly in the middle. And again, I'm lining the points up on that two inch pencil line that I drew, okay? So now you can decide right here if you want your design to be side to side, I mean, top to bottom, or if you're not using a paper that has direction, you can line it up at the top or the bottom. So it's a very, very flexible, uh, flexible one. Okay, and now what I um, did was I took a sticker, a 12 inch border sticker, and I just put it through all the way in the middle of the frame punches just to tie them all together. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one here. And I'm gonna go right on that two inch line um, for this one. This is the Booyah Halloween collection, the new Halloween collection that's out. And I'm gonna take that sticker and put it right there from the bottom to the top right at my two inch mark. Okay, so that will get um, your border done. <clears throat> Sorry, I need another piece of, uh, of black paper. And then what I did was I wanted something that went on the inside of that spooky border since it was a flat one um, and um, I wanted to, I'm actually using the paper that is part of the collection and I'm cutting into it with the inch and three quarter, the Creative Memories inch and three quarter square. So again, this is a two inch repeat. The square in the middle becomes a two inch so when I use the inch and three quarter creative memory square, it will fit right, right in the middle of this particular punch. Okay, the um, damask flourish doesn't have that um, opening and a lot of the other ones do not, but this particular one does. All right, and I'm just going to play with the, um, play with the uh, paper and I'm going to line it up in my, 
I'm going to use my punch upside down and I'm just going to line it up so I can get some of these fun designs. Like I want that nice Halloween cat. And that's going to become one of my, it's going to become a decoration as part of my, um, and I want that globe there. Okay. So that's just another way that you can use um, some of these fun papers, these very busy papers, is turn them upside down, make them decorations, um, you know, and you can really have some fun with it. I'm just putting it right in the middle there. <clears throat> Okay, and then you decide what size mats you want on um, on your uh, paper. Um, if you want to do four by sixes, you can. This particular one, I am using three and a half by five inch mats. I'm using four of them. So if you want to cut three and a half by five inch, we'll do two three and a halfs and three and a half by five inches a really nice size because when your pictures are printed four to six um four by six there's not a lot that you're cutting away which is which makes it really nice so i've cut two pieces at three and a half and now i'm going to turn them and cut them at the five inch mark i've stacked them so i'm going to put my run my blade through it a couple times to make sure that it goes through. Okay. And then those now become my four, my four mats. Okay, so I wanted to do um, just to pop it a little bit more. Um, so I added a one inch strip behind it down the middle. And this particular one, I'm using the Colonial blade. Um, again, it makes it um, look almost like it's pictures hanging like in a gallery in a way, like I did with this one as well. Okay, so if you are going to do that technique, then you need two one inch strips. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my blade to the colonial blade, which gives it a nice old fashioned, almost like a decal blade. And I'm gonna just start it. You always need to start, because I want the um, colonial on both sides. So I want to do a start. And sometimes I just always start at the half inch mark um, because then I can use those half inch pieces um, usually as borders on another page. Okay, so I'm going to do a half inch. And that just starts the colonial blade um, on the side. Okay, and then this piece, like I said, it's a half an inch strip and you can really use these for other borders or other things like that. Okay, and now I'm going to cut one more time and then one more time at the one inch mark. Okay, and I have two one inch strips. All right, and I'm gonna just kind of put these underneath my mats just to kind of set them apart. Uh, probably at about the one and a half inch in from your edge would be your first one. And then on your next one, it would probably be, oh, at about seven, six and a half. About six and a half. Okay, so you can go ahead and tape those down. Okay, so now I've got a double page spread here. 
And then for the spider web, I'm going to then cut all these little pieces, these little pieces that came off the edges. And I'm going to use my repositionable tape on all of them. And I'm going to put them on the corners of these mats, sort of like the old time um, photo corners in heritage books. So this is a good technique to do with if you're doing a heritage album. Not that you be, would be using this spider web punch, but if you have um, debris like that, that comes off. Okay, and then that's what that looks like. So it really does make a really nice um, pattern. And it sort of finishes off your, your page. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all four. And that will finish up um, the technique. And then you can decorate if you want, you can add more, um, you know, I'm using a very busy pattern, so I'm not gonna add any more embellishments to this particular page. But you can see that if you weren't, like if your one pattern wasn't as busy, such as this one that I used with the silver and gold collection, you could do a, a nice title in one of them. Um, this I thought was looked a little bit more formal, almost like a wedding kind of page. Um, and that would um, certainly uh, be kind of a fun for that too. So I hope you enjoyed your technique. I'm just going to go ahead and finish up my um, my little corners. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Bev De Bono Designs. I have many, many technique videos there. And my techniques are usually um, a fast technique on how you can um, just use a, a fast technique to make a page that looks like it took a little longer than it really did. Um, and I, I love to do pages like that because we don't always have time to spend so much time on one particular page, but it's always fun to do one that's kind of special and not have it take uh, so long. So it's Bev De Bono Designs. Please subscribe to my um, YouTube channel. I usually post a video every week and I do many collection classes and those are with the Creative Memories Collections and you can find that on my uh, website, bevdebonodesigns.com and you can um, sign up for any of the collection classes um, that I have that are recorded and you will get all of the, the um, the measurements, the photos, and the actual class itself. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed your technique and I hope you tune in again soon um, and spend some time with me on my technique classes. Thanks again, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>